Welcome to another painting tutorial for how to paint Commander Shadow Sun. Before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to Bad Moon Cafe, who are kind enough to be sponsoring this YouTube channel. Bad Moon Cafe is a wonderful establishment based in South London near Borough Station or London Bridge Station. And it's a board gaming cafe that and tabletop gaming cafe that really is just, it's such a wonderful place to be. There's an amazing growing community of people uh, and the business is going from strength to strength. Um, you can book tables to play their vast library of board games or you can book tables to play Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigma, Warcry, all of those kind of tabletop games that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there are others other providers are available. Um, they are a really nice group of guys that just um, love the hobby, love chatting about Warhammer, love getting to know people and building that audience for themselves. So um, you should check them out if you haven't done so already. If you are based in London, you should be playing there already. If you haven't, get yourself down to Bad Moon Cafe. If you are visiting London, get down to Bad Moon Cafe where you can pick up a whole range of uh, miniatures and paints and hobby hobby supplies and of course board games. Um, yeah, uh, I'm frequently there so uh, if you're ever in the vicinity give me a shout and uh, we'll meet up there. Um, but yeah, seriously go check it out. Their website is www.badmooncafe.co.uk and they are available on all of the social media platforms. For this tutorial, you will require a pot of Contrast Medium, Sterling Battlemire, Flesh Terrors Red, Black Templar, Sigor Brown, Basilicanum Grey, Leviathan Blue, Skeleton Horde, Talisar Blue, Apothecary White, Wildwood, Space Wolves Grey, Grifthound Orange, White Scar, Screaming Skull, Ulthuan Grey, Evil Sun Scarlet, Rust Grey, Fenrisian Grey, Grey Seer, Retributor Armor, Liberator Gold, Iron Warriors, and Uriel Yellow. So when painting our Shadow Sun miniature, there are two main components really that you need to focus on. And um, there's lots of other different colors, but the really two big areas are the white armor panels and all of the black details that are surrounded around the, uh, around the miniature. Um, the, the black details are things like the guns and this kind of like ribbing here on the crisis suit and stuff like that. So what we're going to start with is the black details because we're going to come back and do the white afterwards because the white is the top kind of armour panels and the black is almost like the exosuit underneath and we don't want to kind of do the white first and then kind of try and get at the black uh, later because we can neaten up the uh, white panels with some grey sear if we make any mistakes. So to do all these black details, we want them to be nice and strong colours. So uh, we're going to actually start with a layer of Basilicanum grey. And this gives the Black Templar something to just kind of cling on to as it, as it, as it, as it, as it, as it goes onto the mod model. So we take our Basilicanum grey. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this in a nice even way. And we're going to start on the gun here, so on this fusion blaster. So we take some on our brush and we kind of, we don't want it to look like it's got a drip or anything on the end. We want kind of just a nice even amount on the brush. So we're just gonna actually take a little bit off it by using the pot. And then we're just gonna pick an area on the weapon. And I'm gonna start here at the edge. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of start here and I'm gonna pull it down like this. I'm always going to paint my brush strokes going in the same direction, like so. And if I need to kind of get at a different angle, I'm going to move the model. And I'm just going to be very careful with how I apply it because I don't want this to be overwhelming because um, the black will go on and it will be really very strong if it, and if it, there's too much like there is in this area here, it kind of creates almost too much of a dark colour. But I always go in the same direction and if I need to move, I move the model 
rather than my brush. And I'm always methodical, so I'm taking it a panel at a time. So over up on this next panel up here, we're going to start, and we're just going to start pulling it down like so. And if we splodge on any, uh, any other areas, we just smooth it out like so. So we just keep going and we just keep being very methodical. And we want to be quite quick, but also very patient. We don't want to don't want to kind of just like slap it all over the model because that's when you get those kind of streaks and you kind of get that weird, almost like a highlighter pen when you, uh, when you go over a previous bit of highlighter pen. Like so. So we're just going to keep going. So I'm just moving around to the other side now. And I'm going to start painting this Basilicanum Grey all over the Fusion Blaster. Once all that Basilicanum Grey is dry, you can see uh, that we've got this nice kind of even grey coat from which to work. And so in order to now darker it down, we're going to use Black Templar. And we're going to use exactly the same technique that we used with the Basilicanum Grey. So we're just going to very steadily take it a panel at a time, always kind of going in the same direction, to just darken these panels right down to give us that nice deep black that you can see on the box art. So starting in the same place as before, I'm just going to start painting the Black Templar over these panels. Once all that black Templar is dry, we're going to give all of the black a highlight. And we're going to do this with some thinned down rust grey. So what we're going to do is just from our palette, we're going to take a little tiny bit on our brush. And we're just going to start picking out all of these raised corners and edges and things that you see scattered around all of the black details. So just going to very carefully start running an edge highlight, like so. And all of the black. Now it may look a little bit stark, but don't worry, we're going to give it a final touch that will blend it all together. Once those rust grey highlights are dry, we're going to give it a little spot highlight with some Fenrisian grey. And to do this, we just want to hit the absolute kind of apex of the corners. So up on this fusion blaster up here, you see just like along the top there, like so, just where the light would catch on the black. like this. We don't need to do many of these, just a couple, just to give it some extra depth. Um, but you want to go around and kind of just find all these places where you want to do a little Fenrisian grey, mostly just on the corners. of These black parts. Once that Fenrisian grey is dry, we're going to give an all-over glaze of a roughly six to one mix of Leviathan blue and contrast medium. And we're just going to do this on the black, and this just smooths out all of those highlights that we've added and gives it a nice kind of 
almost clean sheen to the black. I just want to throw a good layer of it over all of that black that we've added. To the model. With that Leviathan Blue Contrast Medium mix applied, it's now time to start neating and neatening up our mistakes on the white armor. So for this, I'm just going to be using some grey here, and I'm just going to go around and correct anywhere where I've left the splodge of colour that I don't want. So for example, right here on the chest. So I'm just going to start painting this grey here over that. And you will need two thin coats because the grey here is quite light and the colours we've used are very dark. So I'm just going to go around and we're just going to stay on the lookout for anywhere where we've left a, a colour that we don't want, like so. Just going to keep spotting these areas. And as you've been painting your miniature, you'll have remembered where you're doing this, but it's always good to check in and around places like the arms and the legs, just in case where you've tried to maneuver your brush. With that gray sear applied, we're now gonna work on the white armor. So for this, we're gonna use apothecary white, and it's gonna be our first coat. And we're gonna do this all over all the parts that we want to be white. So we're gonna take quite a large brushful and we're just going to pick an area to start on and I'm going to start here on the leg um, and we're just going to start painting this apothecary white all over the armour panel. We're going to just be very careful to watch for any pooling that happens and if we see some we're going to use this very brush just to keep almost dabbing at it to pull that contrast off. Once that apothecary white is dry, you'll see you've got this really nice shading, but the uh, white armor is no longer bright enough for what we want. So we're gonna brighten it right back up using some Ulthu and Gray. Now, what you want to do here is you want to thin it down a little bit more than you would normally. Um, in fact, I've not even thinned it down as much as I should there. Just add a little bit more water on the palette. There we go. Um, and so once it's this nice th nice and thin, you can actually just kind of, it, it, it goes on quite nicely if you're just nice and careful, uh, like so. So you just want to, with this thinned down all through and grey, just start attacking those areas where the apothecary white hasn't settled as strongly. So you just want to like this, just very carefully picking out those areas with your brush. to brighten those panels right back up. Because it's nice and thin, it should go on quite nicely over the apothecary white. And as you can see, I'm kind of using like a, almost like a dabbing motion to pop, pop it on so that the, the color stays nice and strong, but not overwhelming. Like so. So we just want to head around all of these armor panels and this is a medium layer brush but I do recommend keeping a smaller brush on standby for those harder to reach areas. 
also to neaten up those transitions closer to the join. So on this area, like I've done here, I just want to bring that in a little bit closer to that nodule. With that Ulthuin grey layer applied, you can see the model's already, well, it's already looking pretty good. Um, so the next thing to do is to just apply some highlights here and there using some white scar. And so I thin some down on my palette and we just want a tiny little bit and we're just going to pick little areas like the tops of these nodes on the armor here and here. like that, just to add a little bit of extra sort of light pop. So we're just gonna pick little areas like the edges here to add a brief edge highlight, like so. So we're just going to continue around the model doing things like this. And you just want to kind of find all those areas where the light, where the light catches on the model, just to, just to give it that sense of of the light as it hits the model. With those white scar highlights applied, you can see that the white armor is done. And well, you're most of the way there. I know it doesn't look like it now, but it will, trust me. So what we're gonna do to continue is we're gonna paint in all of the brown parts. And these are things like these extra systems that you see on the gun and the, um, the missile pod there on that fusion blaster but also on the, uh, the, well, I guess the towel version of a purity seal. So for this, we're gonna use Saigor Brown. And we wanna be really careful how we do this because obviously if we get some of the Saigor Brown on the white that we've painted, well, we'll ruin it. So we'll have to start again on that particular section. But to do this, we just wanna pick an area. So I'm gonna pick here on the cloth. I'm just gonna start painting this Saigor Brown all over like so. Just being very methodical to make sure that it's a nice even coat of this color. Also taking extra good care around the leg. Once that sidewall brown is dry, we're gonna add some black Templar to the mechanical parts of these these cases so uh, for example up here on the missile pod you want to put black templar over the missile itself and next just to finish off all those extra black details we're going to use a bit of thins down dawnstone and we're just going to give them a little bit of a highlight. So round here on the missile pod, just want to do a circle. Going around. Like this. And on these. I'm going to highlight the top part like so and going down the middle of these as well just want to draw as straight a line as we can going along both of those missiles, like so. 
With those highlights applied, we're now going to move on to the gold details. And for this, we're going to use Retributor Armor. And the gold details are all of these kind of plugs and things that you see, like that holding the armor together. So there's a couple here on the front. And we just want to, very similarly now, we just want to be very careful when we go near all that lovely white armor that we've painted. And we just want to do a coat of Retributor armor all over these areas. Next up, we're going to shade those gold parts with Basilicanum Grey. So we just want to be very controlled. You'd actually, this is too much paint, as you can see on my brush. So we're just going to get some of that off. And I'm just going to be very, very careful as I apply this to the gold. Once that Basilicanum Grey is dry, we're going to give it a layer of Liberator Gold. And we want these to be nice and bright, so we're just going to do the whole area of the of these uh, nodules, like so. But we're going to leave it where it's settled in the recesses. With those metallics done, we're now going to work on the hair. And for this, we're going to use Flesh Terrors Red. So we're just going to take some on our brush and we're just going to start painting this all over the long flowing hair. Once that flesh tear is red is dry, we want to give it a highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. We just want to pick out all of the strands of the hair, as you can see. brought out quite nicely by the contrast. Once that's done, we're going to start painting the face. And for this, we're going to use Space Wolves Grey. Just take some on our brush. I'm going to pick a point to start on. And we want to kind of go, as, again, similarly with the armour, we just want to go as close to a recess as possible. So I think for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down here at the base of the chin and just draw it up to the hairline. So I'm just going to make contact with the model and draw it up like that. I'm always going to paint it in towards the recesses. And this way I don't overload the skin with Space Wolves Grey. But I get that nice bluish tint. Like so. Next, we're going to highlight that flesh with some Fenrisian grey. So we're just going to pick out the sharpest edges of the details on the face. So we want things like the edge of the eyelids, like so. That pheasant resume grey applied, we want to add a dot of yerial yellow on the eye. With that yerial yellow applied, we're going to add the pupil and we're going to use some black Templar for this. So we only want a small amount on our brush 
We just want to brace our hand very carefully and place a dot of the black Templar in the middle of the eye. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes with black Templar just to get the colour as defined as you want it to be. Like that. And with that, the model is very, very, very nearly complete. Um, you could leave it here if you wanted to, but we're going to take things a little bit further. Um, and so when you look at the box art, you can see that there are these orangey yellow markings all over the model. Um, and this, we're going to try and achieve a few of these now with some freehand. Now, when you look at the box art, you can see, for example, on the fin up there that there is this orange marking. So we're going to try and recreate that now doing some freehand with some Griff Hound Orange. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a very small amount on our brush because we want to have quite a fair bit of control here for what we're going to try and do. And then on the fin, we're going to select a place that we want to start. And I'm going to start about here and I'm just going to draw a very straight line heading down like so. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more and I'm going to darken that down just a little bit more. Next, I'm going to go on top here. I'm going to draw a straight line across to where it meets that line that we've already drawn. Then to reverse the model, I'm going to do the same thing, going all the way down, like so. So once that's done, we can then take our Griffhound Orange, take a little bit more on the brush, and then we can just start filling in the area. We don't want to have loads of Griffhound Orange on the brush just enough to kind of almost just stain it, that colour. Being nice and careful when we get up to that line that we've drawn so as not to overlap it. As you can see, I'm doing this in a couple of coats. and I'm using these consistent brush strokes like this to just try and keep it even. I'm just using my eye really to make sure there isn't any weird inconsistencies like so. So just to finish this bit off, just want to continue blocking in all the area that we want to be this colour. Once that part is dry, and then once again, again, going to take a little bit more Griffhound Orange, and then just next to the line, I'm going to draw another one running parallel to the one we've already drawn. Just making sure to leave a white gap. Similarly again, I'm going to follow this area up here. I'm going to draw a line parallel to the one I've already drawn. 
like so. Once you're happy with those orange markings, uh, the model looks, well, it looks pretty fantastic, doesn't it? Um, but the next thing we're going to do, and this is the last step, is to do the glow of the plasma. And for this, we're going to do some thinned down ulcerin grey. And then we're just going to very carefully in these recesses here, put the, the, put the ulcerin grey in. like so, and we're going to try and catch the edges as well as we do it. So once again, I'm going to put our brush inside the recess and then just run our brush down the inside whilst also catching that bottom edge like this. So you just want to do this for all of these vents. Like so. And once that all through and grows dry, we want to take some Talisar Blue on our brush and we want to run it into the recess whilst also still catching that bottom edge and we want it to all go in the same direction so we want to go from back from front to back so we want to put our brush in here and then just pull the Talisar Blue like that just want to go in and pull And with that, the model of Shadow Sun is finished. So the next thing to work on is the base. And this is a very, 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 very simple method. Um, what you want to do, and of course this is open to interpretation. This can look however you want, but I'm going to base it like I would to fit with the rest of my Imperial armies for some reason. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Basilicanum Grey and on the Big Aquila up here, I'm just going to start painting Basilicanum Grey all over. But in order to do it nice and smooth, I'm going to kind of pick a recess, recessed area, and I'm going to start here in this big impact crater here. And I'm just going to put my Basilicanum Grey in, and then I'm going to pull it along the panel like that. And I'm going to keep doing it this way. So on one of these bigger ones, on one of these big flat wide open areas. I'm just going to start at the bottom as far as I can and I'm going to pull it up like this. And I'm just going to take it a section at a time so that I don't kind of get splodges or weird kind of overlaid effect. So coming down here, I'm just going to start Next up I'm going to paint in all the soil with wildwood and this is so I can match it with the uh, uh, Sterling Battlemire because it's a reasonably close colour. Once that's dry we're going to paint the skulls with Skeleton Horde One of my absolute all-time favourite details about this miniature is if you look very carefully on this skull here, you can see the service studs, and that's a Space Marine skull. Obviously not a Blood Angel, because, you know, they're the best. They wouldn't die to the Tau. <laughs> 
And next up, we want to give all of those spent bolt casings and the service studs on this Space Marine skull. Uh, you can see just there, a coat of some thinned down Iron Warriors. And next up, we're going to shade all those bullet casings with some Basilicon and Grey. Once that's done, I'm then going to use my texture spreader to place some Sterling Battlemire in all the empty areas that don't currently have any detail or anything. Like so. Once all that basing stuff is dry, we're going to give a final dry brush of Screaming Skull all over the base. This is including all of the skulls, all of that soil that's on the model that we've painted, and of course, as well the large scenic piece here. And with that, the model is complete. You can see I've finished off the ridge of the base with some black Templar and I've also added some tuts just to make that base look a little bit more interesting and add a splosh of colour. But the model is complete. I haven't covered the drones because honestly the, the tips for doing these are all covered in doing Shadow Sun. You just follow the same process for doing the white armour and doing the black and you'll get these these drones to look exactly the same so yeah um i'm really pleased with this the, the method is really simple it was actually a surprisingly quick model to paint and it's very very effective and i love the pose and i think the model is fantastic and another excellent sculpt from uh, games workshop um but yeah i hope you enjoyed this uh, painting tutorial and i hope you find the techniques that i used helpful um, for painting any of your own tower miniatures or even any of your other miniatures that are um, using a white armour coloured scheme. So thank you very much for watching. Like, comment and subscribe, uh, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one.